Okay, guys, we're back. Um, first, we're going to show you these tools. Um, we had to machine these out to uh, fit the magnesium slug. We had to turn the magnesium to fit that slug. And then this is a base here, which this is the biggest that the copper sits in. So the magnesium goes like this. And that's the mixture of the hydrate. And of course this will sit in the, the tool. Once it's in there, Chuck will take this portion and compress it down. This time we're going to hit it with, we're hoping, this is a larger cell, so we're hoping to be up there about half the press's uh, capacity to see what, if we were to add more pressure. So we'll be back. Okay, so Chuck's filling it now, and he's going to... This is the hardest process right here, is to get the hydrate, because it's drawing water out of the air at this point in time. It's sort of sticky, you can see it. And so uh, he's going to fill that up, and uh, then we'll be on the press and show you. Okay, uh, Chuck is on the press. And he's got that cylinder loaded pretty good. And this is going to take a lot more than uh, what we're, we're used to doing. And we built a six inch one and we'll show you that when we go do the measurements and everything. Um, the short circuit current of these is uh, goes it's pretty good. But right now it's being shorted out with the tooling so any voltage that's there is being shorted out and you can see it's pushing it down into the cylinder. We're gonna do it till the copper bulges. We'll be back. Okay what we're gonna show you is see the water coming out of here out of the hydrate? We're actually pressing it out because we're really putting the pressure to it and listen to it. And it's shorting out right now, the cell. It's and it's getting hotter. So we're going to keep pushing here. And we're uh, back and we're showing you. We're forcing it out, but you can see that. Listen to it. You can hear it bubbling out, so we're hitting this with all the pressure we can. And you can see it bubbling out at the bottom, so it's actually pushing the water right out of the cell, right out of the air, under this uh, compaction. But we're gonna we're gonna try to take this to six tons. We'll be back. Okay, as we get the tonnage up here, look, look at the water coming out of the cell. So this cell will not have to be hydrated at all. But we're going to keep pushing it until it's full. You can see it here. And on the bottom. So this is exactly what's going to happen with the hydrates. And this is how it gathers it out of the air. If you look at this, this is the reason a hydrate can run in these cells. Because it locks up the waters in the crystals. And you can see it's coming out. And Chuck and I are going to take this probably too much further. We're going to try to dry this. But this is what a hydrate, how it locks the water up. And so you can see under extreme pressure that, that the water's all coming out of the cell. But we're trying to compact this in here so we get a good cell. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, what we're going to show you here is this is a a paste if you look here and so this doesn't require any hydration but we're going to see what we can get out of it and then we're going to seal the bottom with silicone we'll be back okay we're back and uh, Chuck has got it we didn't add any water to this we don't have to do that but we want you to see how we pressed it in there 
Hey Jack, look it up. Let's see how many mils it got. There you go. Five milliamps. No water added. Now, short circuit that oscillator. So 50 mils <coughs> without a dropping in it. <clears throat> in this oscillator here I designed to pretty much not draw over 12 milliamps. So if we put it on a different oscillator it might draw more. Yeah, we, and, and the short circuit power of these is, is pretty good. And I would say for uh, the chemical and the magnesium and this copper. Um, this is doing pretty good for a crystal cell. But we're just going to leave it like this. We're not going to hydrate it at all. We wanted to share that with you. We're going to let it go up and down all by itself. And let's see. What we are going to do is, is um, tap that one time and let's set the, the way the crystal is going to run with the voltage. You know, like So we're going to sort of polarize it. You just need a little tap. That's it. Okay. And then that little tap, and so now it's going to settle in. Because it's oriented. So of course it's going to come down because it acts like a storage battery as, we, as Chuck has shown you before in the videos. So we suspect around 7 mils continuous operation under load. So I'm in that area. And of course this one here, the liquid's just coming out of it. But we'll run this one later. So we'll be back. Okay, now we're on this bigger cell, and we're going to show you something about what happens under short circuit current. So watch the meter. See how it's climbing? And that's how it supplies its power under load. Because the, the current actually climbs. Okay. That's good. Um, but the water's just oozing out of this, so we'll wait for this to dry out. Okay, thanks for watching. Glad we could share this. Okay, one more thing we wanted to point out here. I'd be pointless as uh, salt substitute cell is about two days old. Well, a day old. And that's where the current is. <coughs> exactly two milliamps and no water. Everything is dried out completely now. And it's running the oscillator and we'll check the hydrate cell real quick here. Okay, and then you can see the current of the hydrate cell is almost double that because it draws in its own water and that's the secret to it everybody is you got to have the wallet water so you can have the ion exchange so uh, <coughs> thanks again for watching good work I'd be pointless <laughs>